Good evening and welcome to Cable 10 Live. I'm your host, Nav Nanwa. This is the show we provide you, the viewer, all the current happenings that are currently going on in our region of Peel. And if you ever want to get involved in any of the conversations that we're having here tonight, give us a call. The number is 905-848-5483 or connect with us on social media at Cable 10 Live or use the hashtag Cable 10 Live and get involved in tonight's show. Now, we are actually going to begin with an amazing news story that our very own Ryan Roca covered. It was a, around the transit integration between Peel and Toronto, and he had the chance to interview Toronto Mayor John Tory. Check out his story here on Cable 10 Live. Recently, Rogers TV Peel had an opportunity to sit down with Toronto Mayor John Tory for a one-on-one -on -one interview. In the interview, we discussed Toronto's relationship with Peel Region in regards to the ongoing problems around transit and traffic. Recent reports released by the Canadian Index of Well-Being state that the average daily commute time throughout the GTA is nearly a staggering 66 minutes and this is due in part to an ineffective regional transit system, continuous construction projects and a growing number of vehicles on the road. Mayor Tory says that this problem is being addressed in ongoing talks between GTA mayors and the Ontario Liberal government. How do you believe that we could more effectively link transit between Toronto and Peel Region? Well, first of all, uh, I would sort of prefer to say link transportation between Toronto and Peel Region because I think there are going to continue to be cars and trucks that have to get around. And, uh, you know, one of the things we're trying to do is make sure that traffic can move better so people who are in cars uh, and, in, and trucks, because that's part of what keeps the economy going, can uh, get around better. But one of the ways to get uh, cars moving better is to take some of the cars off the street by giving people a transit option. And I think we're working closely with the province, and this is where Mississauga, Toronto, and Ontario all work together um, to improve service. There's been dramatic improvements and more to come in terms of the frequency of GO trains, uh, the number of GO trains. I have Smart Track, which is going to be revolutionary in the sense that it will, for the first time, create a subway-like regional service that actually starts in Mississauga, goes all the way through the city of Toronto, 416, and ends up in Markham, uh, which is, you know, outside of the city as well. And it will connect huge uh, hubs of employment, one at south of the airport in Mississauga, the other one in Markham, with the city of Toronto. Commuters in and around the GTA who use transit on a daily basis have had to face increasing commute times for the past several years, and they have been waiting very patiently for a solution to their problem. Mayor Tory says that they can expect to see some minor transit solutions carried out shortly, beginning with the regional implementation of the Presto card. He says that larger solutions aimed at physically linking transit lines throughout the GTA will be implemented over the next five to ten years, beginning with SmartTrack. People may be skeptical who are watching this, but I would say to them that the beginnings of that that should give them reason for hope is the Presto card, because the Presto card is the first kind of regional innovation that we've had, really, of substance. And we've been a little slower to adopt the Presto card in Toronto for technical and other reasons, but by the end of next year, many, many people who use Toronto Transit will have a Presto card. And, of course, many people in Peel and Mississauga already have one, but it will now finally mean that the way you can pay for transit and use transit, at least in terms of paying, will be through the, the, the common card. I think the next thing that will cause this to be uh, something that's more integrated regionally is Smart Track, because Smart Track is to be done in seven years and be operating. And you will then have, for the first time, a, a, a transit, a, a public transit like service that goes from Mississauga all the way through Toronto, including Union Station, and up to Markham. And I think the third thing that will happen around the same time are a lot of these enhancements to, uh, to Go Transit that uh, happens under the name of Regional Express Rail. And I think um, that if you take all those three together and they're all going to happen in the same time frame, Presto Card now, the other two over the next five to seven years or ten years, um, you're going to have, I think, a much greater degree of regional interconnection and regional um, compatibility for transit and it will make people's lives easier. For those who travel in and out of Toronto by car, their commute is just as painful, especially when they have to drive on the deteriorating Gardner Expressway. Over the past few years, the physical state of the gardener has gotten so bad that chunks of concrete consistently break off the highway. Continuous construction projects on the highway never seem to end, and they back up traffic for miles. 
Recently, Toronto City Council has been looking for ways to pay for one major solution that would fix all of the gardeners' problems. Imposing tolls on the highway has been a hot topic, though critics say that it would cause traffic problems elsewhere, like on the lakeshore. Mayor Tory says that they are looking at all of the aspects of placing tolls on the highway and they are considering how it would affect the commute times for residents that either live or work in Peel. Do you think that tolls on the gardener would be an effective solution to the problems that we are hearing about with the gardener right now? Well, I've always had a problem with tolls in a different respect in that I've said that it's unfair to get people to pay for roads they've already paid for, to pay a second time, and I've, I've distinguished between that and new roads. I think new roads are you know, fair for consideration to have some charge made to pay for the cost of building them. But with respect to traffic flow, um, I think the experience has shown in the United States and other places where they have tolls that it doesn't really affect traffic flow if the tolls are kept reasonable. Um, so I think that in that sense, uh, but these are the kinds of things now that the City of Toronto staff are going to study. They've done some preliminary work on tolls and how much money you'd raise and how you'd collect them. They haven't so much studied the impact of any such tolls on traffic and so on, and these are the kinds of things they're going to take a look at. Whether you drive or take transit in the GTA, one thing that is clear is that residents are hoping for relief from commuter chaos sometime soon. Mayor Tory says that he regularly discusses all of these transit and road work plans with Mayors Crombie and Jeffrey, and he insists that they are all eager to achieve change that citizens can actually feel. At Toronto City Hall, I'm Ryan Rocca for Rogers TV. A very interesting story uh, regarding transit integration between Peel and Toronto. And joining me to talk about that story in further detail, I have the reporter himself in studio, Ryan Rocket. Ryan, always looking sharp. Um, <laughs> I have to say, great job on the story. Um, thank you, thank you. There seems to be a lot of emphasis lately put around transit and just the impact it will have to not only grow Mississauga and Brampton or Peel in general, but just, you know, the need to have transit and have transit lines connecting Toronto and so forth. Um, why does this keep coming up as a major issue, and especially for someone, you know, as young as you are? Well, according to the 2011 census, the population of the GTA is now well over 6 million people. And, and those people often don't work in the cities that they live in. Mm -hmm. um, increasingly, you see people that live in Toronto uh, work in Mississauga. People in Mississauga work in Toronto. So there's always, there's always the commuting uh, aspect that always has to go on in, in every person's day. And, and, and with more people and more cars and more trucks comes more traffic. And, and, and what we've been seeing over the past several decades um, is that the, the commute, commuting time ha has increased greatly to the point that yes. it is now c taking a huge burden, uh, not only <clears> on <throat> personal family time, but also financially. It costs millions of dollars every single day mm -hmm. to have people waiting, uh, wasting gas in traffic on the highways, on the streets every single day. And, and from 1994 uh, to 2010, the average commute time in the GTA increased uh, over five minutes. Um, for for each every single person five five to seven minutes, mm -hmm. so th this problem is becoming worse and worse as the population increases, and and, and we need to find ways to integrate uh, the transit more effectively so that people are able to not only have have to take their cars uh, or, and trucks to work every single day, but that they can find a more effective route that can get them from one place to another through transit. You know, one of the things that Mayor Tory mentioned, and by the way, a great interview with Mayor, Mayor John Tory of Toronto, uh, was that, you know, the first real regional innovation that's being implemented across transit in general in the GTA is the Presto card. I've used the Presto card mm -hmm. numerous times. It's, it's a very fast, efficient way to get on Go Transit, to get on using the subway. And the fact that now there's regional usage, I think, is the first major step to get the transit lines integrated amongst both Peel and Toronto. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's a great start in, in order to integrate regionally uh, how you pay for transit so then it's a lot easier, for example, uh, if you get off the GO train and you need to use the TTC. Um, now that the TTC is starting to use Presto cards a lot more. So, so I think the way of uh, paying for transit, that, that's a great start. But I think that we need to look at more, uh, more in-depth physically linking uh, transit lines throughout the region and, and not just by way of paying. You know, one thing, one thing that has been coming up a lot, and particularly in Brampton, is the need for two-way go, right? Mm -hmm. Two-way go is, is something that they have been fighting for, that they're looking to really implement. You know, they've asked the, the province for that capability. 
Um, you know, with the with the service like Two Way Go being implemented, do you think that will really change? I guess a lot of the transit behaviors that we see. You know, the amount of cars that are being used, the amount of time being spent getting to work. You think that's a great solution that be that can be implemented quickly? I, I think the more the more transit lines, the more the more effective transit lines that we <coughs> have throughout the GTA, the more that you will have people actually using those transit lines, and, and in turn that will then. Uh, take vehicles and, and uh, off the road, which will increase, will which will decrease the the commuting time for those who who travel by vehicle. Mm -hmm. and, and at the same time, if we have more effective transit lines, the commuting time will also decrease for those who take transit. So it, it's a difficult problem to solve because it, there's a lot of aspects to look at, and each city is is very different. Um, but with with the main transit providers being Go Go Transit yes. uh, throughout the region. Uh, it's great to see also, it's important to mention, uh, Mayor Tory uh, mentioned it in the interview that Go Transit is planning uh, to add about 700 train trips, uh, additional train trips mm -hmm. over the next five years, mainly during off-peak hours throughout the GTA. And, and that is a $13.5 billion pro dollar project that's being led by the Ontario government. So that's good to see that Go, Tr Go Transit is increasing the amount of trains uh, that will be running. Uh, but at the same time, we need to look at ways to physically link these transit lines to get them to where the populations <coughs> really are. Yeah. You know, Ryan, one thing I do want to ask you, and you being a long-time Mississauga citizen, is, you know, Mississauga and Brampton, Peel in general has been known, has been pretty much known as a commuter region, a commuter city, mm -hmm. depending on the way you look at it. And, you know, putting these transportation means in use sort of still promotes that whole notion behind the fact that if you live in Brampton, Mississauga, chances are you're commuting into Toronto mm -hmm. for your 9 to 5. Um, do, how do you feel about that? Because that, that seems to be something that a lot of the city officials aren't necessarily interested in because of the fact they want to start creating jobs more locally. And, and in Mississauga, now the fact that Mississauga is such a growing city, uh, we are seeing more jobs here in the city and that's great. It's always great to have uh, people working where they live. Again, that will also decrease commute times because people won't have to commute as far. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will decrease the amount of traffic. So, but at the same time, you won't have everyone working where they live. A huge portion of the population, like I said earlier, will live in one city and work in another. A and that's hard to change because the jobs, many of the big jobs are in Toronto, some are in Mississauga. Uh, but you'll always have people commuting in and out of cities and you still need to find ways, whether or not there's a lot of people that live in the cities that they work in, you still need to find ways to get people to be able to have an effective commute for the people who ha do not live where they work. You know, Ryan, when we get back from commercial break, I want to I I talk a bit more about the Gardner because, mm -hmm. you know, adding tolls to the Gardner was something that was, that was very much debated across Toronto City Hall. And it's something that even to this day is still being looked at as a potential option to help out that situation as well. And also love to get your perspective being a student and how you use tools like the Presto card yeah. to your advantage to get around both all, all three cities. We'll be right back after this brief commercial message here on Cable 10 Live on Rogers. Welcome back to Cable 10 Live. I'm your host, Nad Nanwell. We are talking transit integration between Peel and Toronto. There looks to be a lot of new innovation that's going to be coming into play when it comes to connecting the Peel region to everything that's currently going on in Toronto. And if you want to join in on the conversation and give us your opinion on this transit integration plan that's been talked about you know, across all the municipalities, give us a call. The number is 905-848-5483 or connect with us on social media at Cable 10 Live. Use the hashtag Cable 10 Live and get involved in tonight's discussion. And join me to talk with us in further detail. I have Rogers TV's own Ryan Rocket. Ryan, thank you so much for joining in. Earlier on the show, we showed a story that you had taken part in when it, when it came to interviewing Mayor John Tory of Toronto and getting his perspective on transit integration opportunities amongst Peel and Toronto. And, you know, the one thing I wanted to talk to you about was the Gardner. The Gardner, as of right now, uh, it's in poor shape. It's a very tedious highway to get in and out of downtown Toronto. And there needs to be an improvement. And one of the improvements that is being suggested is to add tolls. Now, you had the opportunity to talk about Mayor John Tory regarding tolls in further detail. And just what was that conversation, if you just don't mind recapping it, for our audience tuning in? 
Well, uh, recently, uh, I believe it was September 21st, Mayor John Tory's executive committee uh, approved to, <coughs> to have more further research uh, done uh, on what implementing tolls in the Gardner mm -hmm. would look like for the city of Toronto, how it would affect traffic flow, uh, how it would, uh, how much money it would generate, and, and, and that research is ongoing. And, and Mayor John Tory, at that same time, he said that he was uh, refused, he refused uh, the idea of tunneling the Gardner uh, because that would cause too much havoc for traffic throughout Toronto. Uh, so for now, it looks like the main option that they are going towards is implementing tolls on the Gardner mm -hmm. in order to get enough money to pay for all the necessary repairs that that are needed to be done on the Gardner as of right now because it, it is becoming, uh, to say the least, a safety hazard mm -hmm. with concrete falling uh, very regularly from the highway and we've seen it fall onto cars before, just miss pedestrians. It, it seems like if it's not repaired, it's only a matter of time before something terrible does happen. I know, especially if you ever choose to take like Lakeshore Road down into Toronto yeah. and you're driving literally underneath the Gardner, oh, you can yes. see that there's not a lot of foundation really holding it up. Mm -hmm. So again, like you mentioned, there is debris that's falling on, on, on cars, unfortunately. There is some repairs that need to be done. But going to that solution regarding, hey, we're going to charge tolls temporarily, and then, you know, once we make enough money, we're going to take them back. Do you think that sends the right message? Like, do you think, you know, people who live in Toronto, better at the GTA, who have been using the Gardner for quite some time, like, is it really their tax dollars that are going to work here? Um, well, May Mayor Tory has said that there hasn't been a, you, there is not enough uh, funding that has been generated through tax dollars mm -hmm. that would be able to pay for all of the necessary repairs uh, that need to be done to the gardener. Um, so, it, it, by implementing tolls, they they they're studying, uh, but as of right now, they do believe mm -hmm. uh, that that would <coughs> be the best option to generate all the necessary extra funds that need to be uh, imp uh, generated in order to pay for. Uh, the repairs that would have to be done to the gardener and, and that, that construction period would take something uh, around six to seven years uh, of further <coughs> construction on the gardener to take care of all of the loose pieces of concrete and, and reinforce the highway. Uh, and, and there was a lot of controversy. Uh, his critics, uh, critics to the plan were saying that, well, if you implement tolls on the gardener, traffic's just going to back up on the lakeshore, it's going to mm -hmm. back up on the gardener by stopping cars to have to pay for tolls. Uh, but I in the interview, Mayor Tory said that studies uh, that have been done and examples from the United States have shown uh, that if tolls are kept at a reasonable rate, mm. then they will not in that the tolls being implemented will not, in fact, uh, cause traffic backup to a huge extent. Ryan, you mentioned that you know if construction wants to happen, the Garner would mm -hmm. take about six, seven years. But something else that's going to take about six, seven years is the smart track. Yeah. You know, it, it's a it's a it's, good, it's a track that's literally going to connect Mississauga and Toronto. It's going to lead into Union Station in Toronto. What are your thoughts on that? Is that is that exciting? Because you know, for some people, it's like, hey, this might be a route that I can utilize mm -hmm. to go to work, or it might be a better u route that I can utilize in case I want to have some leisure time in Toronto on a Saturday during the day. It, it, I think it's a, it's a great start. Um, uh, Imagine this, you live in Mississauga and you're able to get to Markham through the smart tracks, mm -hmm. all the way as far as Markham. So, so that's a good thing to see. And, and during this federal election campaign, we've seen all three federal leaders <coughs> pledge to, to provide some sort of funding for the tr smart track. So Mayor Tory expects that it will for sure be going through yeah. uh, and, and it will be ready in, in about seven years time. Uh, it does have a, a large price tag associated with it, nearly $8 billion. But then again, it, I think that will be our first a uh, real regional link yes. in, in transit through, throughout the GTA, the GTHA. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be great to see that because then uh, we're not stuck having to go from the GO train mm -hmm. to the TTC uh, to wh whichever connecting lines. Uh, and, and we'd be able to take fewer uh, transit routes and, and just one main route to get where you need to be. Uh, that, that would be nice to see throughout the region. Especially since you have cities that are asking for extended subway lines mm -hmm. or just, you know, LRTs, if you look at Brampton as an example. Having something like the Smart Track really is a, it, not only is it smart from a capital investment standpoint, mm -hmm. but it, it, there's not a lot of legwork that really goes into implementing that versus creating a new subway tunnel. It, it, it's, it's great to see, though, Ma Mayor John Tory pointed out that he would be <coughs> using uh, infrastructure already in place uh, to, to assist in building the smart track. So, mm -hmm. so that would greatly reduce the amount of money that's needed for the project and the amount of time that it takes to complete the project. 
so that that's kind of nice to see, and also also the the, the how quick the smart track I is projected to be uh, in getting you from place to place. Yeah. Uh, I saw that some routes that normal that normally take 45 minutes would now take 30 minutes. So again, that that's reducing the commute time like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. uh, which has gotten far gotten to be far too long for many commuters in and around the GTA. So that would be kind of nice to see. The smart track does have many. Uh, uh, positives attached to it, mm -hmm. uh, and, and though the, the price tag is $8 billion, in the end it looks like it would benefit uh, a lot of people. Ryan, being that, you know, quickly we only have less than a minute left, being that you are currently a student, does the idea around some of these transportation means, are they attractive to, to, to you or any people in your age group? Well, I'm, I, as I've said on the show previously, I'm heading into university next year, and, and I don't have a car myself, so I'm going to have to commute a lot. Uh, and it, Having something like the smart track in place over the next few years, uh, that would be nice to see, especially uh, for, for young people who don't have vehicles, because mm -hmm. it helps them get a around a lot easier. And using the things like the Presto card, it makes it a lot easier to pay. And linking lines makes it a lot easier to physically get to the locations that you need to be. So those are the two things that I think are a great start mm -hmm. in achieving uh, the goal of reducing our commute times Excellent. and making it easier to commute throughout well, Ryan, the GTA. I want to thank you for joining us here on Cable of 10 course. Live. Best of luck and next time we see you, we'll be right back here on Rogers TV.